Welcome back to Red Dirt Resale, and I got a um, storage auction story for you. This is about the time I got the unit with two King Tut Egyptian replica thrones. This is a unit that I got probably about two years ago from now. Um, it was a live auction. There wasn't a real big crowd. It was kind of a local, what you call a honey hole place that, you know, I've gotten a lot of good units because a lot of times there's not many people there. Especially in the past when there was a lot of live auctions, um, there was very rarely anybody, hardly anybody there. Now they still do it live and there tends to be more people there because there's very few live auctions now. So when there is, there's a lot of, you know, especially the old timers that won't buy online. So they pretty much try to go to every single live auction that there is. Um, but at this time, there was just a small crowd there and you know many of the people that were buying units or many of the people that just buy units in general are just kind of part-time they're just looking for small units they don't want to deal with big items or furniture and all that kind of stuff and you know i was that's i do it full time so i buy all little stuff big stuff whatever so that can be an advantage sometimes you know being to where you're in a position to move big stuff and a position to sell big items but um like I said, it was a little mom and pop place, honey hole, close to close to where you know where I live and everything. And I bought several units that day. Stuff was going cheap, and this is a place where because it's a mom and pop, they like some of the bigger companies. They'll let a unit start at a dollar. They'll set you know if that's if there's a crowd there and that's all the unit's gonna get, then they'll sell it for a dollar and you know ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever the case is. This location, they wanted a, you know, they'll typically want a minimum bid. Sometimes the minimum bid is way less than it's going to go for. Like they'll say, we need $50 for it, but it's one that is, it's going to go for 500 bucks. And then sometimes it's the opposite. They want to start it at $200 and it's one that it's, nobody's going to give you a hundred bucks for. But this one, they opened the, we go to this unit. It was the last unit, I believe. They opened the door up and there's this kind of crazy, Egyptian chair right there in the front and these big like columns probably like eight nine foot tall Egyptian columns I mean it's not obviously not like straight from you know ancient Egypt or anything they're they're replicas but you know really cool unusual decor and then there's other stuff there's like um, there's sofas and stuff in there and then you can see like part of what looked like a grandfather clock in there but um, the Egyptian stuff is just something you don't see very often. And, you know, when you're buying these units, you're always on the lookout for, you know, different stuff because you get a lot of the same stuff over and over again. You kind of want some different stuff to put in your store or, you know, whatever the case is. Or when you see stuff like that, that's a sign that they're going to have other good stuff, other unusual stuff. So as soon as they open that up, he's like, but it was a lot of, so there's a lot of couches and stuff in there. It was, I think, like a 10 by 20, 25, somewhere in there. And he's like, you know, we need a $250 start. And I immediately was like, I'll do that. You know, I'll, I'll start it at $250. And everybody's looking at it and everybody's ooing and aahing over it. But none of the people that were there were serious furniture buyers. None of the people that were really serious buyers at all that were wanting that much stuff. I mean, like I said, it was a 10 by 20, 25 and a lot of big stuff in there. So I ended up getting it for $250, which, you know, the minimum bid, that's what I got it for. I remember later on, the guy at the storage facility, he was the manager. He was like, you know, that unit got brought up and he said that the owner that set that price, that he was, he was kind of a little bit upset that that's what it sold for. But there were several bidders there and that's what it went for. Nobody else bid. But anyway, so I got it for $250. That was one of those where I got really, really excited because you know, it's a killer, you know, it's a killer deal. You're basically, you know, $250 was, was nothing for this because I'm seeing living room sets in there. It's like, I know I can get $250 at least for, you know, living room set in there. There ended up being, so buy the unit and everything and we come back to get it the next day or so. And there ended up being actually three living room sets in there. Two of them were good. One of them actually ended up not good because they there was a white set and then there was a there was a, like a brown set, a white set, and a red set. The red set was stacked up on top of the white set. 
And so over time, they were kind of almost like sticking together. But when you go to pull them off, the dye from the red one had gotten onto the, the white one. So it was like there was red marks all over the white one. So it kind of ruined that one. But um, so that set was pretty much, there ended up only being two sets that I sold. The other set, I think I, I think I ended up giving it away for free or something, just you know, so I didn't have to haul it to the dump. Um, and then, you know, there was the big columns, like decorative columns. They were kind of weird. You couldn't really tell exactly what they were actually in the unit because I forget they were actually in two pieces. I mean, you could tell they were a column, but you didn't really know if it built something bigger or what the case was. But then up, they just attached the two pieces and made a big decorative column. And there was two of those in there. And I think those sold for like 200 bucks a piece. So that was the money back in, and then some right there. And you had the living room sets in there. And then there was a grandfather clock of really, really, it turned out to be a really nice grandfather clock. Um, I mean, this, you know, is one that would sell for several thousand dollars. But grandfather clock isn't the easiest thing to sell because nobody needs a grandfather clock. It's just a luxury item, just something cool that people want to have. Um, so it took me a little while to sell it, but I did sell it. Um, and once I got, the, I don't remember the exact price, but it was way more than two hundred and fifty dollars. I really, I can't remember the exact price now. I'm thinking around four or five hundred dollars, but I could be off on that. And then there was. So you have the grandfather clock, the sofas, a couple other odds and ends as far as furniture goes, and there were the two Egyptian chairs. And turn out there was there was an up underneath there was a name on it and this company. Um, so I ended up looking them up, and these things cost two thousand dollars each. And there's two of them. If you order them from that site, and they were and they're still selling right now, you can go look them up. They're $2,000 each, and they're exact, supposed to be exact replicas of King Tut's throne. Um, that's, you know, they have over there in Egypt, but it's an exact replica. And these things are actually handmade, and each chair takes two weeks. So they spend two weeks on, you know, one chair, this company, you know, hand carving on, painting everything. And like I said, they're two grand a piece. They make other like crazy furniture, like thrones, like medieval thrones and stuff like that. But, um, so two grand a piece and I ended up putting like, um, we had them in the store for like a thousand bucks each and, um, took us a little while to sell them, probably about a month or two, but they were kind of cool to have in the store because everybody oohed and over them things and everybody wanted, we posted them on our Facebook page and people wanted to come just look at them and they look and they're like, I'm, you know, I, I can't afford them or I don't want to put them, but I just wanted to come look at them. So it was almost like an attraction. People were just coming in and looking at these chairs and, um, you know, and just kind of oohing on and then just seeing something that was a thousand dollars, you know, in a thrift store. People thought that was funny, but we did end up selling those things. Um, I think right at 700 bucks a piece. Um, so great for us. You know, the person got a deal because I mean, they were like in pristine shape. They were like brand new. And so they get a deal on the chairs really from what they would what they would cost and it worked out good for us But they were really cool and here's some photos of the chairs right now And so you can kind of take a look at them. They should be up on the screen So besides the big stuff, I mean, just the chairs alone, you know, made the unit. There wasn't really a whole lot of boxes in it. There's a few odds and ends here and there, you know, some some stuff. But in the very back, when we get to the very back of the unit, there's a couple boxes back there. And like one of the boxes had like die cast collectible cars, which those, you know, those always do good. There were several of those. And then one of the boxes had baseball cards in it. And actually I had some pretty good baseball cards. It had a couple albums. It had you know, um, some individual like cards in the plastic sleeves, but then it had also several, you know, a bunch of unopened packs, like, you know, wax packs, you know, 
cards that had never been opened. And then also there were several autographs in there. there were Tehran, who he used to pitch for the Braves. I'm not sure where he's pitching now. Autograph ball, Jeff Reardon, and then there was a Del Murphy autograph ball. I actually ended up keeping that ball. Um, there was a Danica Patrick autographed Sports Illustrated, you know, the, the female um, NASCAR driver. There was one of her autographs in there, and a few other things like that. There were several, you know, several Beckett's and different stuff like that, but, you know, so that ended up, that box or two right there ended up generating enough money to cover the whole unit also so it was a pretty good unit not a ton of stuff in the unit but it had some really cool items and the chairs like i said they were they're one of those things that you know you're not going to get something like that all very often and they were like in perfect shape and they were just kind of you know really cool to have I mean, it because they were like i said it was like a museum piece because they were exact replicas so like something you would see in a museum you know, showing what something looked like, but it was cool because, you know, I found it in a storage unit, got it got it really cheap, and we had it in our thrift store, and just something really cool for people to come look at. So anytime you can, if you have a thrift store, or if you just go to the flea market, regular, all that kind of stuff, if you can get your hands on like odd, eccentric, you know, weird stuff at a decent price, then it's kind of cool to have. If you got a pan arm and a leg for it, it's sometimes it's not a good idea because that kind of stuff can be really hard to sell. And, you know, every, like I said, people like to look at it, but it's not the easiest to sell. But if you can ever get a good deal on, you know, really funky, unusual, eccentric stuff, then, you know, then go for it because it really helps your store out for people coming in. And then people have that mindset too after that of like, you know, we never know what they're going to have in this thrift store. Like, you know, they had Egyptian, Egyptian thrones in there, so we got to keep coming and checking this place out because you never know what they're going to have. But um, that's basically it, you know, kind of a shorter story. Not a, not a whole lot to it, but, you know, as far as twists and turns, but that's it. But I got plenty more stories. We got plenty more units we're gonna go, we're going to buy and pick it up and doing videos on and, you know, other stuff that, you know, as far as the resale business go, you know, that we're gonna make videos on because this is our life that we're living every single day in the resale business, running a thrift store, running an auction, buying storage units, buying pallets, all that kind of stuff so we never know what's going to happen next, what kind of what kind of interesting thing we're going to find, what kind of stories we're going to get, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to follow along, like this video, put a comment on, on the video, and then subscribe to the channel. Alright, thank you very much. Have a good one.